whether you're introverted, extroverted, sensitive or not, whatever the thing, like ultimately none of it matters. None of it makes you any better or worse or any more or less likely to succeed. You know, we've all got point A where we start in a scratch and we've all got point B, which is, you know, where we want to get to in our business. And all it means is understanding who you are and what works for you and that your journey might take a slightly different direction to get there than everyone else. Welcome back to another week of Talking With Experts podcast. I am your host, Chris Cowden, and this week I get to talk with Emma Louise Parks, a fellow introvert who changed her career and now runs a successful online coaching business. She shares how to manage your time more effectively, how to connect more authentically with people, and some mindset hacks for fellow introverts. Thank you so much for having me on. And yeah, two British accents for the price of one today. Tell me a little bit more about, I know you you had experience as an air traffic controller previously, and you've been very successful at that. And tell me how you came to start a online business and uh, become a coach. Uh, so it probably goes back even further than before I was a controller I did that for 17 years but I had always been kind of a confidant to people I didn't even really know that coaching existed back in back in those days but as I um, started the new career in air traffic control I was very busy for the first three years training um, for that that's how long it took to qualify and then when I'd finished all of the training I, I loved to learn so the next thing I did was actually a life coaching certification by mail not not even by email actually by mail because it was so long ago and I didn't do anything with it other than just you know learn from it but then I was always kind of a coach and confident to friends and Mm. and colleagues and again it's not really something I considered until around 2015 um by that point I'd been coaching training air traffic controllers for about five years so I was one of the people that instructed them when they joined the company and they would go off to the training school, learn all the basics, and then they needed to be trained on live traffic, which was what I did. And I started to realize a lot of mindset around air traffic control. So obviously they need to know the strategy and the rules, but so much of it is confidence. And so much of it is having that belief and and knowing and trusting your own instincts. So I got really fascinated with this and that's when I started to look into neuro-linguistic programming and I I took my NLP qualification and I did um, a life coach cert just after and started doing that on the side and then back in 2019 now I decided that it was time for a complete change and yeah brought both of those businesses online full-time. So uh, yeah I've I've been for the same circumstance where I took uh, an NLP training in 2018 but it wasn't the right time for me to go in and do coaching. I think you have to figure out if that is for you right then you go into it and you but now you've found your path and you're doing very well for yourself and with the with the ambitious helping get helping the ambitious introverts uh how much of your past experience has been helpful in your business right now has it has working under a lot of stress and um your experience there helped you with your online business You know, it's strange because for the longest time, I couldn't really see how what I did before was relevant to what I was doing now. You know, I would see all these people in the online space saying, oh, I used to do X and now I'm here as a coach or consultant. And it it made complete sense. And I was like, oh, I didn't really see what benefit or what help this this could be. Um, But I think everything that we've done up until this point in our life is there to prepare us for whatever we do next. And it was actually my own coach that looked and she was like, what are you kidding? She was like, I would want to hire a coach that had been an air traffic controller because I know that you've switched on. I know that you can think really quickly. Yeah, I know that you've got like the big picture uh, and all of this kind of stuff. So I think in terms of attracting clients, it's definitely helped. One of my clients said that it was one of the reasons that she signed with me because she was like, oh yeah, you know, I want her brain on my business. In terms of like being helpful to me and preparing myself, it's a very different kind of stress and pressure. And I think that people would think, oh, like controlling airplanes is way harder than starting an online business. But I would actually say that the online business is harder because 
you have to be a generalist in so many things in the early mm. days. And I, you know, I had to learn so much about marketing, about sales, about tech, about accounting, like all of these things that are so essential, even in the early days for business. Whereas in air traffic control, I was just doing one thing day in, day out. I was like the specialist in that thing. So what I have taken with me is knowing that if I can do that, and I went through that three years of training me, which was obviously really, really tough. Mm -hmm. And if I could go through and spend 17 years doing that really stressful job in really busy airspace, then even when things feel difficult and hard building my online business, I know I can do it because I've done hard things before. Yeah. And I know you, um, you were doing a, you, I've watched a video of you on your, in your Facebook group, which I, which I adore because I am ambitious and I am an introvert and I do shy away. <laughs> it was made from for people. you. Yeah, it, it is made yeah. for me. It, it's a perfect time and that we connected and I watched the video and you were talking about multitasking and um, your content calendar. And I, I'm all over the place at the moment with trying to get, my podcast interviews doing and starting an online business and um i would like you to share your content calendar or strategy just just so anybody else that feels overwhelmed with it um can maybe take something from you today yeah sure and it's one of the i'm gonna say a mistake probably not because i learned from it and now i can help others with it but it's one of the things that i did in my business that probably wasn't the best idea where i wasn't really scheduling and i was just accepting things like you know virtual coffees or booking in client calls just randomly to suit people and then just writing content when i felt like it which inevitably was never because you know i don't love the content creation aspect so I just found that I was getting really frazzled and I felt like I was spending a lot of time in my business, but not really being very productive. So being an introvert and highly sensitive, I really wanted to manage my energy. And what I said in the video, and I think Chris, what you found so useful is that I block my days now into specific tasks. So that can sound a bit, oh, because I know a lot of extroverts out there that love to like schedule in 15 minute blocks and 40 minute blocks and be like super productive. But actually each time we flick between a task, we lose a percentage of our attention. So if we're doing that all the way throughout the day, our energy is going to get drained so, so quickly. So what I would say to anyone listening is look at everything that you do during a week in your business, write it all down, you know, on an A4 piece of paper, every small thing. And then think like, what kind of energy am I in when I do that? And what does it lend itself to be next to? So mm. one of the mistakes I make see people making is say they need to write an email sequence for, you know, a welcome sequence, let's say after a lead magnet. So they're like, oh, so then they sit and write them and then they're like, oh, and then I've got to go and schedule them. And then I got to, and it's like, they're actually two really real different energies because writing the emails, you're in a creative energy. Mm -hmm. But then if you've got to start messing around with tech and maybe it's like me, it's not your forte and you're doing it yourself. Like that's actually for another day. That's mm -hmm. actually should be batched with things that are more technical or, you know, admin and, you know, think about the writing that should be done on the day that you're writing other content or maybe recording a video or being really creative. So it can seem a bit counterintuitive at first, but it's really thinking about what flow of energy suits me best. And one of the things that I said in the video, I've actually got a blog post on it as well on, on my website, on the similar vein, is what the days that I do client calls, I don't do anything else. Because mm. for instance, on a Thursday, I have between five and six one-on-one -on -one client calls so I didn't even check my emails in between because on that day I'm in the energy of I you know I'm coaching mm -hmm. and in between calls I'll you know hop outside or maybe get a coffee or change rooms or something but if I start to try and get sucked into something else that's taking my attention I just feel exhausted yeah and and I like that you also have the weekend to have a detox so I, I know when I do too much of something then I get a little bit it becomes a little bit tedious and then I lose my energy I get overwhelmed I get overwhelmed quite quickly and that's something that I'm working on but um yeah I, I love it I love that you're focusing on clients on one day um yeah I'm definitely going I'm definitely going to take um your 
your advice for calendars and i'm sure somebody else i'm sure that i'm sure other people will who are listening to it this as well what else um has helped you or um what have been the the greatest lessons that you've learned along the way that could help somebody who gets overwhelmed quickly um i think the biggest thing is and and a lot of it is trial and error but we don't often notice until it's too late that we're overwhelmed or overstimulated with information as it quite often is in, you know, if we're in the online space or if we research in, I don't know, Chris, if you're anything like me, but oh, I love to research, but then, you know, you're down the rabbit hole and you end up more confused than when you started because you've looked at too many options. So we really get like overwhelmed and overstimulated in that way quite easily. Um, but it's really that awareness of noticing like, when do you feel like that? Is it after you've spent half an hour on Instagram, say? If it is, then I would say, like, set a timer and spend 20 minutes on Instagram and no longer. And even if you're still feeling good and, and it's going well, it's like, stop before you hit the wall, like, quick mm. while you're ahead. Um, and it's kind of a variation of the 80-20 rule, but in a different way. Like, you know, if, if you can cope with an hour on Clubhouse, then stop after 45 or 50 minutes. Don't let yourself get to that stage because ultimately we're all building businesses so that we can have amazing lives and we need mm -hmm. to make sure that we save our energy for our life outside of business because as you know once you've hit that wall of like overwhelm and overstimulation it takes a little while to get back from it and and i think uh, us introverts struggle a little bit more but there, there are benefits to being introverts and i'd love to know your um a little bit more about your brand and why you started helping introverts specifically. So when I first came into the online space, I, yes, got overwhelmed, definitely. And I had you know a lot of experience of, of coaching. I'd been certified for about 10 years at that point. I'd done my NLP. I'd done, you know, thousands of hours coaching as an instructor in air traffic control. But I didn't know much about the other things like marketing and I just thought, oh, I can just be a coach. And then everyone's like, well, what kind of coach are you? Are you a life coach? Are you a mindset coach? Are you, you know, a confidence coach? And I was like, oh, I need to be a type of coach. And then, you know, and I felt like I brought all of this stuff and I had all of these really great results and experience. But I felt like I looked at my own website and marketing and I thought I wouldn't hire me because I don't really know what I do or, or, or who I'm for. So it was quite a, a difficult few months. And I actually worked with a brand strategist um, who our paths crossed very randomly. And uh, she was running a, a group. It was her first group. And I decided to join. And it was all about really identifying like who we love to work with and what experience we have that we can bring to people and, and, and bringing it all together. And so I, I was going through like, what do the people that I love working, what do they all have in common? And one of the things that came out is like, they were all action takers. I don't work very well with the people that like to sit and complain. I work much better with people that are like, okay, tell me what to do. I'm going to go do it. Great. So that's where the ambitious came from because that, that covered that. And then it was, there was something that I couldn't quite articulate for quite a few weeks into this this group course. And I was like, I, I don't know what it is, but there's there's an element of the people that I work with. And I think what that element was, was a high emotional intelligence. Mm. But I it just hit me one day and I was like, introverts, like I, I need to work with ambitious introverts because that's exactly who I am. So mm. I understand all of their challenges, you know, like the overwhelm. It means that I can write content easily. It's so clear to people, you know, should they be hiring me? Are you an ambitious introvert? Yes. And, and what it means like going forwards is, yeah, I've built this amazing brand and this great business, but more importantly, I can easily put out that 10 minute video that you watched and you go, that is super valuable because that's exactly mm -hmm. what I need to know, exactly what I need to hear because I understand my audience. Yeah, and you've, you've, you've identified who your avatar is and I am one of those avatars. <laughs> yeah. And it's a great thing. And people reach out all the time and they're like, I'm so glad I found you, especially people that listen to the podcast. They're like, you know, oh, I feel like you've, you know, made this just for me. And such and such that you said was, was so useful. Whereas 
you know, if I didn't have this brand that was, you know, niched down or didn't have a specific, you know, ideal client, say, I could be talking about really nice stuff about your schedule and marketing and stuff, but it's not the same. It's not the same as having that connection. Yeah, you've got, you've got to go deeper when you're figuring out who your niche is. So uh, I, I know a lot of people talk about the client avatar, but how important is it to really get detailed about who you want to attract into your business? It's so important. I think that the client avatar thing can be a little bit overdone by some people to be like, you know, oh, imagine your ideal client and you've got to be like, you know, oh, well, her name's Megan and she's 32 and she drinks matcha lattes or whatever. And I think that that can be very restrictive. And what we did in the group that I was in and what I do now with my clients is look more at the attributes and the values of the client and where they are versus where they want to go. So more of a psychographics view mm. than a demographics. And what that means is that's why I've got the word ambitious in there. Because, you know, if I had built up that avatar in the way that a lot of marketers do, I wouldn't know anything like that. I would just know that maybe Megan goes to yoga and she wants to earn more money or, or whatever. But when you start to go, oh, action takers, then everything changes. Yeah. And the whole like language that you can use, the way you design your programs, the speed of them, all of that changes very much to someone that works with, you know, underconfident people say. So it's so, mm. so important that you know. Yeah. So instead of, like you said, values, but maybe find objectives or, and then, and then instead of, oh, they've got to be from a specific place, they've got to be a specific age. Uh, age is important, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so I know you're, I'm going to say a business and coaching expert. Expert, definitely, because I'm talking with an expert. Um, what I, I like to give, I like to ask my experts what actual steps that they can give of my audience to help them grow and scale their business up. Uh, so what actual steps can they take today that would help them grow their coaching business? What advice? So I think, I think I definitely, this would work for anyone, but especially any introverted or sensitive entrepreneurs amongst your audience. But often we got the big idea and we know what the, what we want the outcome to be. But what I see time and time again is that it's too big. And people almost get overwhelmed just at the thought of it. So let's say it's, let's give an example, like so-and-so wants to launch an online course, like, and they put on their to-do list online course, and it never gets done because it's huge. It feels big. It's scary. It's uncomfortable. So what I always do myself and have my clients do is like break it down into the most tiny granular steps you can imagine that they seem ridiculous but then you just commit to doing one to three of those a day. Mm. So one of my clients was creating a digital product and, you know, that was literally what she'd got on her to-do list. And I'm like, what's the first thing that you need to do? The very first thing. And she was like, well, I bought, I bought a training on how to do it. So I'm like, well, the first thing then is watch the training. So she went to training and takes notes. And then it's like, what, what's the next thing? And even to the point of deciding a name, like that's one point. So then she decides the name. So it's like, oh, okay, I've done something for the day. And then when the when the steps are so small and so manageable, but they're done in the right order, you achieve so much more. So I would say if there's anything, there's one thing you can do to grow and scale your business today, take that big thing, the thing that you really want, but that you're not quite doing and spend an hour and write down every tiny mm. step in order that it needs and then take the first one. Yeah, and uh, I was on a previous episode and he said, just try and find an opportunity to find a win, whether a, a small a small win rather than, a, 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 it could be a monetary win, but it could be starting a Facebook group or write one email, just, just, to, just to feel some kind of reward from that activity or return on your time investment. And that's exactly what it does. Like as soon as we do something, maybe for someone, it could be like they want to start an email list. Maybe what they just need to do is like sign up to MailChimp. 
but they've done so they are they, they've gone from I have this big abstract thing that I want to do to oh I'm doing this we're in it we're in the energy and we've started so yeah I, I completely agree like the reward that you get and the feeling of oh, I'm taking action just creates more action amazing and um, what are you doing right now that um or what strategy or what process are you using that is working for you that could potentially work for somebody else so it could be anything i think i'm not sure it's a strategy as such but something that's grown my business tremendously is relationship building and making time to connect with people to connect with my audience you know if anyone I re respond to my weekly newsletter i i respond you know i do have a team but i try to keep very close to people so you know instagram dms anything like that it's always me responding i'm in the facebook group numerous times a day i always respond to to people's posts and you know just making those connections not just from a point of view of oh you know this could be a client but um, you know, my podcast has been running for almost eight months now. I I don't even know how many people I've interviewed a lot. Um, and, you know, and I have those connections and making sure that I stay in touch and, and really, I guess, nurture those because that's where so much comes from in business. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we create friendships. That's where we create clients. I've like, I can't tell you how many people have either been a podcast guest and then gone on to be a client of mine, or there are people that they've been my client and I've been their client in, mm -hmm. in various parts, you know, and yeah, they could go scrolling through social media, but it's much more likely in business that you're either going to hire someone or recommend someone that you personally can vouch for. Yeah. And I think that's the whole, the whole idea of my podcast is building the quality of my network and also just seeing if there's a way that we can all work together to help more people and that that's that's what the podcast's about but also i want i want to build relationships with people and this is a this is a great opportunity to do that so um care nurture compassionate these are all good things these warm me up oh <laughs> <laughs> good words for sensitives yeah yeah they are so I can remember I did, I did do that test, but I can't remember the results, but I would definitely say I'm a, an introvert. I don't know what personality type I am, but um, how can somebody learn about that? I, I know you, you got me to do a test by, what's the, uh, the doctor's name? That was Dr. Elaine Aron. So that's the, the high sensitivity test, um, which it's, it's not an exact science, but they say if you score above a certain amount, it's very likely that your nervous system is just more highly sensitive, um, which is about 20 to 30 percent of the population. So actually quite a lot of people. But um, it doesn't mean sensitive as in like, oh, I'm emotional. I'm going to burst into tears like every five minutes, which is the misconception. It's more sensitive to external stimulus. So, yeah, the Internet feels very noisy to sensitive people and is why we get overwhelmed things like artificial light um extreme hot or cold caffeine alcohol you know loud music all of these things that other people might not even notice going on in the background we can sit there and be like oh that music's just driving me mad because it's too loud <laughs> yeah and do you think a lot of sensitive people are more emotionally intelligent or because they are aware of the little things that are happening yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent, more than that, a thousand percent, um, because we pick up on the nuances and we pick up on energy. So much of it is just the energy, you know, and I remember when I was in my job, people would walk into the room and I would be like, oh, I think like they're fighting with their partner or something. And it's not a psychic thing, but it's just that feeling of like you, you can tell things. I remember or noticing like mm, so, someone's not quite right. Something's just a little bit off with them and saying to someone else like do they seem okay to you and the other person be like yeah they seem fine and I'm thinking mm, no and then like you know you find out they're not well or something later on but yeah definitely that those little perceptions and and like the the things that aren't being said behind what is being said I always like to say so when someone goes oh I'm fine and you think no you're not I, I could just tell that that you're not, you know, that a lot of people can miss that kind of thing. So yeah, the emotional intelligence for, for sensitives is yeah, sky high. And do you think it's important for uh, business owners, entre 
yeah for business owners for the people that are trying to run a business how important is emotional intelligence i think for well in a number of areas really first if you're a, a coach consultant or mentor or someone that's working one-on-one -on -one pe with people obviously it's you know if you've got that emotional intelligence it's much better for your for your clients and it means that you can pick up on the nuances and also understand you know, when they're lying to themselves, I'm going to say they might not be outwardly lying to you, but they, they go, oh, well, I can't do this because of this. And, you know, that EQ just gives you that. Oh, well, let's talk more about that and, and get into it. I think from building a team and a leadership point of view, that emotional intelligence is so important because um, certainly for me, I didn't manage anyone in my old role. It just wasn't the type of job that I did so to be building a team and you know outsourcing things and managing mm. people it's hugely important there and thirdly I think is that knowing to trust ourselves because we often know when something's a little bit off so you know in the online space there are people that aren't always completely honest but that emotional intelligence quite often, you know, you can look through someone's account and be like, mm, I, I don't get a good feeling about, about this. Um, so knowing that and kind of trusting our instincts as business owners, I think can stop us making mistakes. So what are the, so I know let's, let's go into that because um, a lot of people are turned off by lots of things and um, spamming messages, a lot of I, 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 that, that, when somebody says I can do this, I I can do this for you. That turns me off. I'd I'd rather them say um, you. Uh, but that's just a little. That's what's the what's a turn off for you? <laughs> I I really really dislike cold DMs. I really because that's the other thing. Some people will just DM. Someone did it yesterday. They liked my post in a Facebook group, so they they DM'd me and she sent me a friend request. She's like, "Oh, I hope you don't mind me sending you a friend request. I really liked your your post and and you know, oh, I was just thinking this yesterday and and we had a conversation and that was lovely. But sometimes it's just like, "Hey Emma, oh, I see you're a coach," and I'm like straight away, I'm like, "I know you're going to sell to me." I've got no issue with people selling. I'm a, I'm a coach. I sell myself. I teach my clients to sell. But it's in a way that's so inauthentic that you feel like a number. Mm. And I think that's the problem. Or someone saying, hey, I've got this group program that would be really great for you. Uh, like, you don't know anything about me. Like, how, you know, based on what? And you just know they've sent that, to, you know, that's AI sent to a thousand people or or whatever the thing is. So I think it's just the, the impersonal nature of that can mm. really trigger us. Yes, the impersonal um, and authentic messages or connections. Yeah, okay, that's great. What is it that turns you on? So it's probably the opposite, but... Yeah, I was going to say the, the building of relationships, the, you know, the meeting someone. I've met some amazing friends online that I've obviously never met because they're online. Um, but that when you connect with someone and you're like, oh, we've got so much in common or you really just get each other and you, and you know, you feel like, wow, that person could be the other side of the globe, but you still managed to create this connection. So I'm all about that. And I think as, as well, I, I love building connections all over the place. And I'd say, I know more people online than I do offline, mm -hmm. but, uh, but when I go traveling to those places, I always try to meet those people. Have you done that before? And, uh, and I love that, that I get to see them face to face and, yeah, I'm excited to go to Nashville and see some people and go to Canada. Have you ever done that at all? I've done it from other for from other online forums, but not since I've been in online business, but mainly because um I've been in a pandemic for about 18 months. <laughs> you can dream at, at the time. I know, but what is really nice actually now that we're allowed out more again um next week i'm going to london i've got a vip day with one of my clients and i've got a mastermind day with my best friend in business who i haven't seen since last year oh. and then the week couple of weeks after that i'm meeting two other friends that you know have become really good friends in the online space but we've never met in person but i'm you know going out for dinner so and, and those relationships they've been built up over time so it's going to be uh, there's going to be so much joy there I can yeah. feel it there. it's going to um, I can yeah feel it's going it. to be amazing oh, amazing so um I think we've covered a lot on this call and um I wonder if you could if there's anything else that you'd like to share today just go ahead and do it I think that 
understanding whether you're introverted, extroverted, sensitive or not, whatever the thing, like ultimately none of it matters. None of it makes you any better or worse or any more or less likely to succeed. You know, we've all got point A where we start in a scratch and we've all got point B, which is, you know, where we want to get to in our business. And all it means is understanding who you are and what works for you and that your journey might take a slightly different direction to get there than everyone else. Yeah. And, and for me, I think I pick up things slower. So I just have to take more time to go through it. And that's just because I'm I'm learning about myself. I'm a little bit more aware yeah. of and I think that's through failure or um, through burning out and then starting again, burning out and starting again. But that's part of the process, which I'm loving. And I'm sure you're loving your journey too. Yeah. I mean, everyone's unique. And I always say that, you know, you can't fail. You just learn. Yeah. Learning experiences. Lots yeah. of feedback. <laughs> yes, lots. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to finish there. But if you have an offer today that you want to share with people how can people get in touch with you and do you have a course that you're running at the moment or an offer you can give away i the best place probably to find me now is the facebook group actually so i've been spending a lot of time in there and it's grown really well and people are making great connections in there too people are signing clients in there which is amazing so that's the ambitious introvert network uh, if you are, well, obviously you are a podcast listener. If you're here, then check out the Ambitious Introvert podcast. And on Instagram, I'm at Emma Lou Parks. In terms of an offer, probably the best thing I would say is I have a really comprehensive ebook, which is all about marketing as an introvert. So it's 49 introvert friendly marketing tips for your online business. And it's just really simple ways that you can make sure that all of your profiles and your email marketing, and everything is working really hard for you. So that even if someone lands on your profile, when you're not online, they can still look and get all the information that they want and just make sure that you're you know, still catching those sales, even while you're asleep. Yes. Uh, you said that I downloaded that this morning. So. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to read that. Um, thank you for your time today and it's been great to chat and uh, I really enjoyed it so thank you again you're welcome lovely to meet you okay bye, bye. <laughs> I don't know how to end these things I, I know, know. <laughs> but it get, I'm getting better at it it's just a process you learn it is yeah it is. it's I'm taking action imperfect action imperfect action it is it's all it's all a process and you know you do I, I always say to my clients and it's so true even in my business it's constant evolution I think people come and they think oh we're going to find a strategy and that's it and I'm just going to do that forever and it's like no it's always changes you're always getting feedback from yourself you're always getting feedback from your audience there's always mm -hmm. a new idea there's always something else and I think you know it's this myth that we can just create something and then just sit there's always going to be tiny tweaks all the time and, and it has and it's never the right time it has to be it has to be perfect at the start i think that's what stops people definitely i, I think the over is a big introvert and, and sensitive thing you know i've had so many people come to me on sales calls or whatever and they're like you know oh well, i'm not ready to start with a coach yet because my website isn't finished and i'm like so yeah, tell me about your ideal client. And they're like, oh, I, I help it, you know, anyone. And, you know, they've invested in like web design and a copywriter and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, and then one girl actually, who'd had a website up for about six months. And then she was like, well, I thought people would find it. And I was like, no, you have to market. And she was just <laughs> like, oh, but I've made it perfect. <laughs> but I, I, I was on another call with the marketer and he said, you've got there's certain stages you have to do first build the connections build the relationships yeah. then the content then start creating websites and everything the website isn't as important as you think it is no <laughs> and my website was done oh god in about july or august last year and and it's fine except you know and i've updated the services and they've changed but my about me page which is actually you would like because it's a lot about my client rather than about me it was just out of date. Like the clients that I was trying to attract last August are completely different to now. My business has grown. I've got a lot more mm. experience. I've learned, you know, who I enjoy working with. So 
I actually went and deleted some of it the other week because I was like, that's not actually accurate. So it's mm. constantly in evolution. I like the story aspect of it where you talk about you and then you just one sentence here, one sentence there. It's really nice. I, I really like it. It's professional. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. Well, it was lovely to meet you. Thank you for being in the group. Make sure that you stay active, post any of, you know, yes. pr promote the podcast in there, do whatever you like, because that's what it's that's what it's there for. I like it because it's it's not like 10,000 members. It's a it's a tight knit community. Yeah. Yeah. I turn a lot of people down because some people don't answer the questions or like they just look spammy, like, you know, they haven't got a proper photograph and I'm like, no. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to keep it quali quality over quantity. Quali yes, exactly. That's what I like. Yeah. So perfect. thank you very much again. And, thank uh, you, Chris. Have, have a lovely evening. Yes. I'll see, see you soon. soon. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, Emma, for being an amazing guest on Talking With Experts this week and for sharing your expertise on coaching introverts. If you like listening to Emma and I, make sure to join Emma's private community on Facebook called the Ambitious Introvert Network or have a look in the show notes for more details and some actual steps that will help you grow and scale your business this week. I'll see you next week.